The Health Committee in uh, Pennsylvania, which is controlled by Republicans there, uh, they're advancing three new bills to make sure that they can get as close to outlawing uh, women's right to choose as possible. Three of those bills are a heartbeat bill, a ban on abortions after a Down syndrome diagnosis, and an unborn child dignity act. Uh, so let's get into the details of those three. First of all, the new laws will require a physician to quote, confirm whether a fetal heartbeat is present before an abortion, despite how far along the pregnancy is. And also under the Down Syndrome Protection Act, abortions would be illegal after a pregnant woman receives a Down Syndrome diagnosis. So uh, the, the, third, the third level of this is where they really get, uh, really get deep into it even further. The third bill, which is called the Unborn Child Dignity Act, it requires women to fill out a mandatory fetal death certificate after a miscarriage. Healthcare facilities will be required to provide burial or cremation options after a pregnancy loss. Adding insult to injury, these pro-life legislators would, would require a death certificate at a cost of $20 to dispose of these remains in accordance with the law. So, um, so there's the, the form that, that women have to put together once, they're, uh, once they learn that they've lost a child. First Jesus. of all, I'm not sure how this even matches up with everything else that they're trying to push and say that that's what they're about. Uh, but the lead sponsor of the bill did say each of these pro-life bills helps to recognize the humanity, the <laughs> humanity of the unborn child. Uh, that's uh, Stephanie Borowitz, who was a sponsor of the bill. She uh, she said that. Who uh, took I do want to point or her own rights. Yeah. Congratulations. And I do want to point out what there was a uh, you know of course folks on Twitter that have personal experience with this were responding to it, but one personally stuck out. So this is an account from, from this particular person. I didn't wanna put their handle or anything up in case they don't wanna be known from that. But uh, one person did point out, this is the start of the criminalization of a, of a miscarriage. My mom, this one particular, again, Twitter user, had 13 miscarriages before she had me. This will kill women. It will discourage getting medical care and lead to septic incidents. It will lead to criminal investigations and to quote, what does she do to cause this? Because those things actually have happened. Uh, it's always, on the victim of these situations that has to then explain to someone who has nothing to do with their life or their decisions or anything else that they wanna do, or the feelings that they have when something like this happens to you, it's always up to someone else. And we're just gonna ignore anything. When it comes to life, we're not talking about the life of the person that's here. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, number one, um, this is big government at its worst. And so conservatives, don't come telling us you're not for big government. You're trying to get inside people's uterus. You're telling them what to do and what not to do. This is the kind of kid you need to have and not have. And I'm gonna make a lifestyle decisions. I'm gonna make family decisions, I'm gonna make life and death decisions for you. I'm gonna make every kind of decision for you. I don't care what happens. I don't care if your life's in danger. I don't care about anything. You will follow my religion. And this is purely about religion. I, if you're not religious like me, abortion is has no moral component to it at all. For I know for a lot of religious folks that blows their mind. They're like, how could you not believe the same things I believe? You should be forced to believe what I believe. I think it's a moral issue. So you have to think it's a moral issue. I don't, I don't. It's called America, I believe in freedom. You don't, you hate freedom. You want everybody to go by the stupid old rules of your religion, which aren't even true. I don't make me get into that. Okay, but <laughs> guys, this isn't even an abortion. This is miscarriage now on the third one, miscarriage. I, look, I don't know about you guys, but I know a lot of women who've had miscarriages. Yeah. And so that is, a, that is a tough moment in someone's life. And you're gonna go and make them sign a death certificate? You monsters, you unbelievable monsters. And then you're gonna ask them, oh, do you wanna cremate the remains? What remains do you don't? Miscarriages are a giant range from late pregnancy where it is beyond heartbreaking, right? And then you're gonna force them into this traumatic moment, right? To very early in the pregnancy where there's nothing to bury or cremate, you're just doing it for theater because you wanna embarrass them for a miscarriage. No, nah, they're monsters, they're monsters. And women who vote for Republicans should have their heads examined. And I don't care what kind of BS feelings you catch. Oh, Jake, you're not a woman, you're, how dare you say that to Republican women? And they're gonna pretend all this nonsense. They're, look at what they're doing to you, look at what they're doing to you. And so if you wanna you know, sign this and say, oh yeah, I love Republicans. They, they won't let me do anything I want with my body. They will have men that are government officials decide what to do with my body. If you sign up for that, okay, you wanna be chattel like in the old days, that's your call. 
but I'm not for it, I'm for freedom. These people hate America, they hate our freedoms, they love big government, they're authoritarian by nature, and they're basically the American Taliban. I don't care what your religion is, I don't want to follow it. If I wanted to follow a religion, I'd live in Saudi Arabia or a country like that. Um. Yeah, you know, as the pencil resident, resident Pennsylvania expert, let me just say that there's been a long tradition of trying to monitor women's sexuality. A few years ago, they tried to pass a uh, an ultrasound bill, which would require women to get a uh, non medically necessary ultrasound before they had an abortion. Uh, most abortions are very early in the first trimester before there's like serious differentiation of the embryo and an outside the body ultrasound can't even detect the embryo. So they were going to force women to get a transvaginal ultrasound, uh, you know, force women to get a probe inserted inside them. Uh, and then they were gonna keep records of everybody who got you know, <laughs> those ultrasounds so that there would be a database of women who got abortions. Um, and thankfully that was stopped after a national outcry. But this, this, this kind of stuff, is about controlling women's bodies, women's sexuality. And you know, the idea this the idea of abortions and religion uh, you know happening at you know a life starting at conception is actually a very recent uh, innovation. Um, you know, history in Christianity, they they didn't consider a, a fetus to be viable before what they called the quickening, which was when a woman could detect the movement of the fetus. Um, this idea of life beginning at conception is something that happened in the late uh, 19th, early 20th century. It's not a deeply held religious belief. It doesn't derive from Christianity's tenets or, or long term teachings. It's something that's happened recently in reaction to a women's growing social, political, economic power. And uh, it's been used to, used to control them. Uh, and you know, Jenk rightly pointed out that conservatives always talk about you know wanting small government, but the result of wanting to control women's sexuality and women's bodies is an invasiveness the likes of which I don't think people can really understand. And it'll reach into the most intimate and personal and painful experiences of your life, and it will make it part of Republicans' you know political gain and their desire to control you. And that to me is totally beyond the pale, totally disgusting, and shows us just how important defeating them and defeating the right wing is if we're going to maintain living in a modern society. You pointed out how they want to make sure that you know they do it for, it's not really a religious reasons. It doesn't matter because many of the folks that follow them based off of these things don't know the religious basis for what they say they believe in anyway. Yeah, so it's true. okay, they'll just say, hey, this is what the Bible said. And they'll go, "Oh, that's right, I haven't read it anyway, so it's okay, I guess, because that's what some politician told me my my religion tells me to do. Um, so that it, mm -hmm. it, it continues on from there. And so they don't really need to even have much of a thought process or anything behind it. And by the way, this is just virtue signaling anyway. This doesn't really have much of, 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 a, of a chance to pass anything. You know, you got the, the governor of the state who said he's gonna veto this. And also, so one more part of this from, from the Grio, they said neither of these bills passes the constitutional muster as well either. At least until the Supreme Court magically puts away Roe, Roe this is Wade as we know, and possibly not even then, because these bills contain no no exceptions for rape, incest, maternal health, fetal anomalies, inconsistent with survival. So it doesn't really matter. They're just saying, hey, you guys, we're trying to get as close to absolutely outlawing abortion as possible, so that you guys can vote for us and say that we're here trying to fight for you and your religious beliefs, which you don't even know what they really are. It never has to match up in a, in a linear way to make any sense to anyone. As long as you're angry at someone and saying that they're the evil ones trying to kill off human beings and that you're the good ones trying to keep them alive while we're bombing people, starving people, uh, taking away their <laughs> jobs and their lives and their health care. Oh, those, that same group is looking out for people's health care and um, it's looking out for people's lives and the other side isn't. Yeah, so I. I want to add context to a couple of things JR and Mike just said. So first of all, um, the governor of Pennsylvania is Democrat, but if he wasn't, they, the Republicans did pass the bill and, and they would have, a Republican governor would have signed it. So Pennsylvania barely avoided having this monstrous law on their books. And that's because they had the wisdom to elect a Democratic governor. If they hadn't, like because the Democratic voters, the independent voters just keep assuming, oh, Republicans won't really do anything. I don't know why they assume that. No, they will, they'll take away all your rights. And that's what they do all the time, that's what they've always done. And so, um, and then in terms of religion, 
Um, I've said this many times, read Numbers 511 through 31. Pick up any Bible, your own Bible if you're religious, and read Numbers 511 through 31. It will tell you that God is pro-abortion. It says if your <laughs> wife cheated on you, you should make her drink a toxic potion. And if you think she cheated on you, and if she did in fact cheat on you, God will make her abort and miscarry. And then you'll make her sign out a form and decide whether you wanna do a cremation or a burial. But God doesn't care, because God's the one that's going to cause the abortion, if she cheated on you, that's in your Bible. That's in your Bible. I don't believe in the Bible, but you do. So the Bible is definitely, definitely, definitely pro-abortion. And so they've been lying to you your whole life. And you right-wingers, you're such schmucks. You didn't even read your own Bible. Oh, well, I don't know, some priest or somebody told me at some point, God breathed life into me. What does that have to do with it? <laughs> pregnancy? It doesn't have anything to do with it. Pregnancy is directly addressed in the Bible. And God does abortions if he, she, if he or she <laughs> thinks that the wife cheated. Now, husband, of course, cheating is totally fine. God doesn't care about that at all. By the way, God's also never heard of Chinese or Indonesian people. But anyway, you wanna believe it, it's not my Bible, it's your Bible, and that's what it says. So I assume that if you're a good Christian, you're pro-abortion, read your own Bible. Now. Mike is right, when you do a uh, transvaginal ultrasound, that is state-sponsored rape. And that is what Republicans passed, and not just in Pennsylvania, many states. These are the people who claim they're against big government. Liars, every single one of them. And then people say, Cenk, why do you rant on the show? What do you want me to be, <laughs> cop? Who should we become? Oh, okay. They're gonna make every woman at the most vulnerable point in her life when she's either made a, a decision that was so personal to her or she didn't even make a decision. It was a miscarriage. The government officials, jack booted, thug government official Republicans are gonna come in and go, now here are the government rules you must abide by because I don't give a damn what you think or what your body is. I control your body. That's what Republicans are at their core. I didn't do it, they did it. They just passed this in Pennsylvania. The Republican legislators passed it in Pennsylvania. They are monsters. Democratic governor won re-election in 2018 by 17 points. And the Democrats in the state legislature got about 10% more popular votes than the Republicans. But because of gerrymandering that's so extreme within Pennsylvania, the Republicans control the state legislature and likely you know, depending upon what happens in 2022 in Pennsylvania, it's possible that the that we may see Republicans regaining complete control. And around the country, gerrymandering being done at the state level and the congressional level can lock in these these uh, Republican majorities, even though they get a minority of votes. And unfortunately, we have a bill sitting in the Senate known as HR one, the We the People uh, for the People Act, that will prevent and make gerrymandering illegal for congressional races. And yet we're still waiting on the filibuster. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Mike, the problem is the people have spoken in Pennsylvania and they voted for Republicans. Uh, a few people, but the people have spoken. Yeah, the um, minority, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 now the, the Republicans hate democracy and the Democrats are the most pathetic party I've ever seen. God damn it, do something already, you're the worst. These fascists <laughs> are taking over the country, they haven't won any of the elections and you're letting them run the country anyway. The, the Biden's weakness knows no bounds. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.